Hi, I'm Black Bright. Well, I'm actually Dark Shades in this video. Welcome to my channel. I hail from the east of England. And um, yeah, so Dark Shades Counselling is not a counselling channel. It's a bit deceiving. It's more like a self-help or a self-care channel. And I like to put a different perspective on things and I like to use my own experience to share with you to see how I deal or how I manage certain situations. So, um, I hope I don't get interrupted in this video. You'll notice from a couple of videos I've been interrupted. So I've now switched off my phone because I'm not expecting anyone to call me. I do have a meeting in about 45 minutes. So I am just going to concentrate on you. And I just want to thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for entering my world. Thank you so much for allowing me to enter into your world. For, you know, allowing me into your home, onto your phone. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, re I really, really do appreciate it. And I know what it takes for people to go out of their way and take time to listen to me, to listen to other YouTube videos. So I really do appreciate it. Today, I wanted to talk about self-awareness. Now, why is self-awareness important? It's important because so many people go around blaming others and they blame others because they haven't looked at themselves. And, you know, they've, they often have these sayings about if you, um, instead of pointing fingers, point the finger back at yourself. And we have all these demands of other people and we don't even look at ourselves to see how we're contributing to a particular situation, how our behaviour is causing a certain reaction. And so it's very important to listen to what you're saying to listen what words, are, uh, what words are being answered in your mind. Because sometimes you might be saying certain things about, oh, that person is a pain in the butt and I wish I didn't have to deal with him or I did, wish I didn't have to deal with her. And then you actually have an answer. There's another voice that comes in and says, oh, well, I guess you have to um, deal with him because you have to work and you know you might lose your job or whatever it is. And so when you're being self-aware, you become conscious of those different voices in your head. And if they're negative, you grab hold of them. You don't suppress them. You grab hold of them in, you know, um, not physically, but in your mind, and you listen to them. By the virtue of listening to them, you're already being self-aware. And what happens is, is that you can tell yourself whatever you want. You can change that language. You can change that tone. So instead of saying, oh, I have to because he's my boss and if I don't do what he wants, I might lose my job. You can say, yeah, yeah, I do feel a bit uncomfortable about this. But, you know, at least I'm earning some money. At least you know, I'm not like other people, or at least I can, um, I can try to enjoy what I'm doing. He's paying my salary, therefore he has a right to demand, demand certain things of me. And so you can change your um, thought processes. A lot of people, they criticise others, and they don't realise that that's what they're doing. And so because they don't realise that that's what they're doing, they don't realise the impact and what it's actually doing to themselves. Now, if they were to criticise someone and say, oh, that person is too fat, that person is ugly, that person's got this or that person's got that. And if they was to project it back on themselves and say, why am I saying that about that person? Why do I need to say something negative about another person? And maybe it's because I don't feel comfortable about myself. Maybe it's my way of projecting what I'm feeling onto someone else. The thing is about self-awareness is about being aware of everything you do and everything you say. And you're aware of the outcomes. You're aware of what happens. So instead of just being on automatic pilot, you get up in the morning, you make breakfast, 
you know, your kids come in, your husband comes in, you all sit around a table. And instead of being on automatic pilot and responding to your family members, it's about how you respond, what you say, and then listening to what you say. Because sometimes what you say gives a particular response. It might even just give a raised eyebrow. They might even go like that, you know, as if, oh, here she goes again. But whatever it is, is you're noticing. And instead of criticizing and becoming, taking it personally, you'll actually reflect on what you've just said that's made them react in that way. If somebody's disrespectful to you, how have you been behaving to, to warrant somebody disrespecting you? Have you been accepting disrespectful behavior in the past? Have you been behaving, have you been accepting domineering behavior in the past? Have you been accepting people bossing you around or telling you what to do? All of those things are about being aware of what you are used to accepting and what you decide that you you are then taking charge. That's another thing. Becoming self-aware is about taking charge of yourself. You take charge of yourself because you are now not being on automatic pilot. You're actually honouring yourself and you're actually aware of what you're saying, what you're doing, why you're doing it, because you're stopping and thinking. It's funny because as I say that, when I decided to do this video, I, I normally have notes that I write down and I don't have any notes today. So this isn't really a contrived video. It's not one where I've written my notes and then I'm going to look at my notes and tell you about it. And it's because I'm constantly on this um, train of self-awareness. I'm always trying to improve myself. And it's interesting because I'm somebody who doesn't like confrontation. And um, I was talking to someone the other day and I decided to send them a voice message because I didn't want to tell them what I was feeling. And so in sending the voice message, I was able to contrive what I wanted to say. Well, when I say contrive, I was able to say exactly what I wanted to say in the way I wanted to say it, in a way that wouldn't offend. And so I was afraid that if I tried to speak to that person by myself, I would say the wrong thing. That person would get offended. I would feel guilty. I would feel bad. I won't be able to take it back. So I left that message in a voice note. And then when I started to reflect, I started to become self-aware. I'm saying to myself, why do you do that? That's not the first time that you send voice messages instead of being direct. And I realise it's because I am, number one, apart from what I've just said, I'm kind of worried that that person is going to upset me or I'm going to upset that person that person is then going to rile me up. I'm then going to say something I, I can't take back because I'm reacting. And even though I'm telling you about being self-aware, sometimes our emotions do get the best of us. And sometimes you can't hold it back quick enough. So I guess in a, in, in a way, I'm trying to protect myself when I send a voice note. I'm trying to protect myself from insults, I'm trying to protect, because I kind of anticipate, especially if it's a difficult subject, I anticipate somebody having a go at me or shouting at me or being um, bad tempered. And, and I don't want that. So I hide behind the voice note. And because I've said it in a way that's gentle, that is um, unoffensive or what I consider unoffensive, um, I feel as though I'm not going to be attacked. And so I have I have difficulty in kind of explaining. You wouldn't believe this when I'm doing these videos, but I have difficulty, especially when it's to do with emotions or things that I really want or that are important to me. I have difficulty in explaining that. So in my road to self-awareness, I realized that 
I do need to confront. I do need to speak out as difficult as it is. And so I, you know, I'm fortunate that I have a friend who calls me out on it and says, listen, I don't want voice notes on subjects like that. I'm not a client. Talk to me. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> oh, what am I going to say? But I find that it's OK. It's OK to make little mistakes. I mean, if you're doing something, what I've learned is that I, I think I was afraid before because I wasn't sure where my heart was. And now, because I've grown and I'm, I'm a genuinely loving person, I'd like to think I am. Now, if I speak to somebody, even if it's about something that I want and I'm a bit nervous about, because I'm coming from a place of love, it doesn't come out wrong. And even if it does, I can take the time to explain. And so now I'm kind of slowly, slowly through self-awareness, facing my fears and standing up to things I'm a bit concerned about or worried about, you know. It's, it's really, it's, it's, and it's quite, it's an evolving process and it's an organic process and it does take time. But it's a really important process. It's really important that you start looking at yourself. If I didn't look at myself, I would be blaming it on someone else. Oh, they didn't get back to me. They didn't respond to my texts and blah, blah, blah. And then I'd go into my little um, bubble and I'd sit there feeling sorry for myself. Because woe is me, they're not responding. And they're not responding because they're just, they just don't like that medium of communication. They may not like what I said in that communication. They may have interpreted it wrong. And at least when you say something and it's organic, you can actually correct their perception as you're going along, which is what I had an opportunity to do. And so I have to practice confrontation. I'm a Libra. We hate confrontation. So it's not just um, to do with a lot of whatever. It has a lot to do with my astrological sign. And it's, it's funny because until I kind of face that head on, I will be hiding behind voice notes. And you'll find a lot of people do that. They text or they leave voice notes or voicemails. And it's because they, they fear confrontation as opposed to anything else. And so when you're aware, when you're self-aware of your behavior, what you do, how you speak to people, how you react, if you're, if you're constantly just watching, not, you're not judging yourself, you're not criticizing yourself, you're not chastising yourself, when you're having these little moments where you're um, not quite happy with your behavior or you're not happy with your reaction or your response, you don't chastise yourself. What you do is that you watch it. That's what self-awareness is. It's about watching what you're doing, how you're responding. And so you don't have to feel angry. You can feel quite calm and say, oh, so that's why you do that. Or, yeah, you say that because of that. And you actually have answers as to somehow the answers come. And you kind of, you're able to answer yourself and understand why you do certain things. But if you don't, if you're not self-aware, you'll never know why you behave the way you do. You'll never know why people react towards you the way they do. And it's really, really important. Okay, and that's all for now. Bye-bye.